Test, test. Okay, quick video. I have to work in about 30 minutes. And so I'm gonna make this quick video about my growth and things I'm proud of myself for. I feel like I'm always trying to grow and I never take a break and like appreciate myself. Oh, the mail is here, hold on. See. I've accepted that nobody watches my YouTube videos, which is such a freeing place to be. I also have another YouTube channel that is like performing. Oh, I gotta catch my breath. It's performing better. And it's a pretty easy YouTube channel. I don't like show my face. I'm just like screen sharing and talking about stuff. And uh, this morning I had a realization like, why don't I just focus on that channel? And what's cool about that is that like it just frees me to use this channel. <laughs> for whatever I want, <laughs> for dumb stuff. Because like, no one's gonna watch this. Or like five people, my cousins, <laughs> maybe, you know? Hi cousins, thanks for watching. You don't have to watch this. You don't have to like, support me, you know? Like, I don't care. I posted a video a couple days ago and I got like two views. It was like a 40 minute video. Like, I don't think anybody fully watched it, but. <coughs> <coughs> I was so happy it was like zero views for like hours and I don't know it made me so happy I was like I can literally make a video about anything and I don't have to feel bad because no one's watching it. I don't have to feel like embarrassed because I'm such a dork or whatever um okay back to the topic of this video before I get like super distracted I am super proud of myself because you know, like life happens so quickly and you never take a minute to take a step back, but I I moved to Spain four years ago almost. And, and you know, a lot of these changes kind of happened with my move to Spain. And I think moving or like fundamentally changing a big part of your life is just really good for you because you can start over. And I really started over in such a mentally healthy way. I do things now and I th it's also the culture of Spain and like probably like a bigger thing but like this weekend I got like uh, a pretty important email over the weekend and I only saw it this morning it's Monday morning you know because I'm not really checking my email on the weekend and it was actually kind of bad because I was supposed to schedule something for this morning and I emailed them back I was like it's kind of last minute sorry I didn't see it over the weekend but you know what I'm I'm like so proud of myself that I didn't see the email over the weekend. It seems like such a stupid thing, but I used to be like, I don't have the words for it. I used to just be way too responsible about things that weren't really my responsibility. And like this thing is actually, is my, uh, uh, maybe that's not the right way to say it, but maybe it is. Maybe it's like not really my responsibility. Like it's fine to have a weekend where you don't really think about work or, you know, I think about like my projects and my stuff cause it's all like hobby stuff. Um, but you know, a lot of my projects, a lot of my side projects, I got this book by the way, The Creative Act. I don't know if you can read it. The Way of Being, it looks cool. I love the visuals. This really spoke to me. I didn't read any reviews. I didn't do I literally just bought a book based on its cover. That's who I am as a person and <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited. Oh, it smells so good. There's just nothing like a fresh book. The object isn't to make art. It's to be in that wonderful state which makes art inevitable. I'm like literally tearing up just reading that. It's like, it's like the pregnancy hormones, but it's just like, I'm in such an emotionally like vulnerable state, but like in such a good way. Like I'm just, I can see, like, like even when it comes to art, like I can see something and I can be like pierced by it and I can just let that happen. And I can be like touched by things. And it, it feels so good. It feels so good to like 
live like this. Um, so that's another thing I'm proud of. I'm just like so much more in touch with with my like emotional, creative, aesthetic, you know, that whole like complex, I don't know what it's called. I'm just in a good place. And I think I was mentioning this about my projects earlier, but like my brother was like recently was like, you need to stop quitting your projects. You need to like be consistent, like do it, you know, like it's a job. And <coughs> I've really been meditating on this for like a whole week. And even like the this video I made about like uh, the, the social media algorithms, the Etsy algorithm, or it's a video I'm going to make. I made it in my head, but I haven't actually filmed it yet. And it, it's like part of me trying to solve this problem of like, Maybe if I can motivate myself by like breaking it down mathematically what I need to do to accomplish X, you know, like I will do it. And, and it's not a bad idea. But while I was doing this, I realized like, hey, maybe I quit projects because I'm like bored of them. Or maybe I quit projects because I'm not having fun anymore. Maybe that's okay. <laughs> you know, obviously you want to be, you know, it's funny. People might see this and think like, oh, well, you're just like an irresponsible, lazy person. And this is kind of like this idea that advice doesn't really apply to everyone. Like most people should probably be more responsible, but I'm like I don't know, a workaholic. <laughs> I've always like, I always show up early to things. I'm like, you know, insane in that way. And for me to show up like a minute late to something is actually like an accomplishment. It's like, oh, I put something else, some need I had. Oh, I wanted to get a coffee before I went ahead of like, being this like perfect robotic thing you know that's like really hard for me and so for me <coughs> quit if you're not having fun is actually a good thing it's something another thing i'm proud of myself for doing um like in these last couple of years i have had started and not finished a lot of projects but i've really enjoyed all of them and uh i don't feel bad <laughs> for enjoying them and I don't think I did anything bad by not having them find some sort of success. I think success is, there's a lot of ways to, you know, it, you have to start defining it, you know? I think when I was younger, uh, I mean, I grew up super poor, but it, and when you grow up super poor, success only means one thing. It means money. Money is freedom. Money will get you a roof over your head, money will get you clothes, money will get you things you need to advance in life. And I felt that way for a really long time. And this is another shift I've made. This has been a really, probably the hardest shift I've ever had to make. I mean, our relationship with money or perhaps our relationship with resources is like one of the most complicated things when you're born in like the post-industrial world. Um, because money is weird, right? It's like, on one hand, I can look at it from an academic sense and like realize it's not really real, it's this like mode of exchange we've created, but it's also like a deeply emotional thing when you don't have money, when you have bills come in, when you're like super stressed about money, like just thinking about those things is like giving me anxiety right now. Also like doing stuff, taking a step back away from it and then like coming back to it is also interesting you know that's not a normal thing you know we think like you abandon a project you quit it you know but like maybe you just need to take a step back i do all these things with my art i really do i have like the healthiest most spiritually tuned work style when it comes to painting like really i will Something feels wrong in a painting, I will s set it aside. And maybe years later, I will come back to it and finish it the way it should be finished. And it will feel so good. And I've always had this like really, really healthy relationship with my art. And my hunch is, it's because I've never sold my art. I've never intertwined my art work with this money complex that I think we all have, some of us worse than others. <laughs> and so I've been leaning into like, wait, what, what would I do if this was a painting? You know, 
I don't get like attached to my paintings either. I like, oh, I'll just paint over it. Everything's just in pro progress. Everything's in progress. Even something that might seem finished is in progress. The only challenge now is my husband hates when I paint over old paintings. And so out of respect for him, I've stopped doing that. And it's fine. It's also like, that's another thing is like, I can adapt my artwork. I'm making a pause there on purpose because it's more about like well, the work part of it. I can adapt and it doesn't like hurt me because, or I can make compromises, you know, like, okay, I won't paint over my paintings, even though this, this has been a part of my process for my whole life, but I can adapt and it's not harmful because my process is so flexible and it's so rooted in the pure principles of what makes my work work. Um, and that is being true to the feelings that I get whenever I make art. I never make art when it doesn't feel right. I just don't. I am so attuned to my feelings when I'm painting. There's just no question. Most of the time I go through life, I'm not 100% sure what I feel. If somebody puts a work contract in front of me and I read it or I review it with a lawyer or something, I don't really know how I feel. I feel jumbled up, you know? Like, I feel like well, this could be a good thing, this could be a bad thing, there's a risk, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. But I never feel that with art. There's never a question. It's always like a yes or a no. It's, And when it's a no, it's also like not a dramatic no. It's like a no, not right now. It's a not right now too. Nothing is final. Everything is in process. Um, and I think part of what has also changed my life in these last couple of years is having a studio. This is my studio. I'm looking in the viewfinder. <coughs> this is my second studio. My first one flooded. <laughs> that was also an interesting uh, cleansing experience. Some of my oldest drawings were damaged. Um, and became moldy and all sorts of stuff and uh, I you know I said I'm not attached to things I was attached to those I finally like discovered some attachment I did have to my art and I had to work through that and that was really cool and and yeah I just like all of these changes have been so good and perhaps the biggest change of all and I'm like tearing up now but is becoming a mom you know when you make art, you're like giving birth to these ideas, these experiences that other people might have. And then when you have a child, it's like that times a billion. Taking care of your kid, raising your kid, all the things that goes into it, it's a lot of work. And a lot of it is not romantic or beautiful. You're changing diapers, you're cleaning stuff, you're picking stuff up. It's, it's trivial work, you know, but it's still work. And because it has meaning. The meaning gives it something more. You know, there are times when I'm picking stuff up and I feel like this is the most meaningful thing I can do with my time right now. And that changes everything, you know, and that, and so having these experiences of like deepening my relationship with my art and like finding a, a whole new place of work that I feel very like deeply, find a lot of meaning in, which is taking care of my child um, and even the work of pregnancy and the work of lab lab labor is like a very short part of it. But pregnancy is like nine months. It's exhausting. And it's like, <coughs> it's like invisible work. You're not really working, but your body is working. It's like this automatic work, but it's still, it's different. And you know, automatic work is also interesting, even in um, like my job, like my actual work that I, uh, I do with my clients. Um, there's a lot of automatic work there too, you know, like when you're coming up with ideas and you're trying to solve problems, a lot of that process doesn't feel like I'm, oh, I'm not like lifting up a box. I'm not like putting effort to like move this from here. Sometimes there's a lot of like that admin type of work, but a, a lot of that automatic work is part of my work too. And so seeing that I have like, you know, I, I do product management consulting, that I do this like very, you know, creatively interesting job actually. The fact that I don't have such a good relationship with it as I do with childcare and art just shows that, you know, there's something wrong there. It's probably my relationship with money. But I'm proud of myself for finding other places where work 
is meaningful and positive and nourishing. And this gives me hope that I can actually work on my real work life um, or maybe transform it in some way. Um, I'm still figuring that out. That's something I have to explore more too because I feel like a lot of my early success came from pushing myself when I felt like I couldn't go farther. And you talk to like really good athletes and stuff and like that is the foundation of what they do is they push themselves you know when their body feels like it can't really keep going it can keep going you know and so where does that level of discipline um where does that fit into like a healthy work balance because i do think there's a place for it i think it's like an interesting motivational powerful thing um i just think in my life, in my early career, I took it too far and I worked too many weekends and I pushed myself and I put in so much effort in things that were not my responsibility and things where I really couldn't push the needle. And very often um, I wasn't really being compensated for, for the level of effort. Um, so I feel like I've grown a lot in the way I work and uh, this is just a video journal entry <laughs> to Say good job, self. You're doing okay. You're doing okay. It's important to take a step back every now and then and reflect on how you're doing. <laughs>